In these two videos, I will give you a short overview of the basic tools and concepts journalists use when they write science news stories for newspapers and on the web. I will cover only the most important topics like why you must stick to the facts and stay objective as much as possible, even though this might be difficult. A proven way to do so is to provide answers to the five W's – who, what, when, where and why. Then I'll talk about how to write basic news leads, which is the first paragraph in your text and probably the most important element in a news story. Other elements like the angle of the story, the hook, the knot graph and the ending I will present shortly and then I'll introduce you to the inverted pyramid, which is a standard template on how to organize your news story. Finally, we'll look at some examples showing that writing in essence is the art of rewriting. Published texts aren't really written, as it has been said many times, they are rewritten. Credibility is everything when you work as a news writer and that's why you must be accurate, truthful, fair and critical, all at the same time. And that's also why you have to keep yourself and your opinions out of the story and respect the integrity of the people you are dealing with. The freelance science writer Tim Radford from The Guardian once said it short and sweet. When you write about science you have to remember that you shouldn't take science seriously. That's the important thing. You should take the scientists you are talking to seriously. And you should take the readers very seriously indeed. You should take the truth seriously. But taking the science seriously is a guaranteed way to make people turn away. Because what people really don't like is reverential or pompous or self-regarding reporting. In that sense, writing about science is just as important or unimportant as any other kind of thing going on in our society. And if you become a preacher or a mouthpiece, you are not a science writer anymore. This graph shows some typical genres of stories and they can be placed on a continuum that ranges from being rigidly objective, like the earthquake announcement on the top, to the passionately opinionated movie reviews on the bottom. The earthquake story is straightforward, factual and unemotional, even though it resulted in deaths and injuries. In politically sensitive news stories, of which there are many in science writing, you always should be careful not to inject your own views. It's okay to use colorful descriptions if they are accurate, but opinions should be expressed only by people quoted in the story. In sports stories, you have attitude and emotion because sports fans, unlike readers of the hard news, love some colorful spin to their stories. Op-eds can be partisan and passionate. But they also must be knowledgeable and truthful in order to convince the readers of your credibility. Finally, reviews of all kind should be fully opinionated and the more observant, smart and witty they are, the better. Okay, basic news writing means that you need to keep your opinions for yourself. But it also means that you need to keep your facts straight. This is difficult enough, let alone discussing the implications of these facts. In an inspection of news articles about climate change in Danish newspapers between 1997 and 2009, investigators showed that when these articles referred to top journals such as Science and Nature, they were inaccurate in their reporting 16% of the time. In addition, 11% of these news articles had mixed up the references 23% had omitted critical information or had made stuff up, 7% had exaggerated the results and 10% came to the wrong conclusions. It is obviously not easy to write about science if you don't know anything about it. But these statistics show that the main problem is not the lack of scientific literacy among Danish science writers. The main problem is the lack of attention to accuracy. The best way to become more accurate in your writing is to ask yourself who said what to whom? What happened? When? Where? And why is it important?
getting these basic questions right and answering them in your story goes a long way towards good reporting. And if you in addition are good at answering the sixth question, the how, how was it done? You might eventually be recognized as a proficient science writer. If you are theoretically inclined, you can even use these six basic questions to formulate your own simplistic but very effective communication theory, as was done by the American political scientist Harold Laswell in the 1940s. He defined an act of communication as answering the following question. Who says what, in which channel, to whom and with what effect? It is one of the earliest and most influential models of mass communication and it is still used to describe and analyze the various elements in a communication process. The who refers to the communicator, the says what to the contents, the in which channel gives you the medium and the to whom refers to the audience and the with what effect points to, towards the societal consequences and it also uh, to the messy spheres of agenda setting, framing and social influences, which we will talk about at a later point. What is important to remember here is to be accurate. And being accurate is not easy. Do yourself a favor and get the answers to these simple questions right, even if you won't write science news and prefer other kinds of storytelling. The lead is arguably the most important element in good news writing. It is the first sentence in your story, it is typically less than 25 words long and it identifies the key facts and expresses them concisely. Some journalists say that as long as you don't know your first sentence, you don't know whether you have a story at all. Often they search for a lead for a long time. But when you have it, it's always quite simple. It nearly always sums up the whole story and it leaves you wanting for more. What did happen? Why? Who is this? So when you try to find a lead for your story, try to collect all your facts, sum them up and boil them down. Focus on the five W's and rethink, revise and reformulate until it's perfect. Which means it should be compelling, clear, active and have a ring to it. Of course, if you don't write standard news stories, but rather essays or features or manuscripts for podcasts or TV, you won't always need to summarize in your lead. Then you can be more creative and offbeat. But you still need to grab the reader by the throat and hold as long as possible. People who don't work with their lead write terribly boring stories. This spells doom, especially for articles on the web where the reader only needs to move his index finger to go away. Scientists generally don't know what a lead is because they have been trained in a completely different style of writing, which we will cover later. So even if scientists have a perfect lead on their hands, they often don't know the importance of it and bury it somewhere way down in their press releases. And journalists never read press releases. Too long didn't read, they say. The piece shown here is a famous example of a buried lead. It is written for a local newspaper in New Jersey some 70 years ago. The newspaper had recruited secretaries from local organizations to report on their group's activities. But because these women weren't trained reporters, they didn't know how to write a news story. So they ended up with this. You can press pause and read it. In the next video, I will go a bit more into the details and the structure of news stories.